I want to start with asking the question, why? Why are we here? Why are you in the job that you're in? Why are you in the relationship that you're in? Sometimes it's a hard question to answer because we're not always in the place we want to be. And I know for myself, for many years, it was a really hard question. And many, many years of um, growing up, I, uh, my mom passed away when I was 10. And for pretty much most of my teenage years, I asked questions like, why me? Why does everything happen to me? Why is my life unfair when all of these other folks have great families and wonderful situations? And so it's, um, it's a hard question to answer why you're here, because I think that, again, you're not probably in the place that you want to be at. And so tonight, I want to talk a little bit about how I've overcome what I went through when I was a teenager and my five mantras for happiness. When I was a child, my family called me the Red Tornado. Now, this was definitely a point in my life where I started to get that fire in the belly. And I was an only child, and so I often caused a ruckus. Most of my family was much older than me, my cousins. And so I was teased a lot and had to stick up for myself uh, all the time. And <coughs> growing up uh, throughout my teenage years, I spent a lot of time caring for my father, who had rheumatoid arthritis. And I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but it's a pretty debilitating disease. Um, and I spent a lot of time caring for him. Uh, I was the one who uh, cared for the house. Um, and I did all the shopping. And even before I was actually uh, allowed legally to drive, I was um, going grocery shopping. Um, so <coughs> my teenage years were kind of an interesting time for me. Uh, shortly into uh, my 20s, my father actually passed away very unexpectedly. And this was a very, uh, of course, life-changing moment for me, not only because I was an only child at that point, but because I was alone uh, and very much in a job that I felt, uh, while I was very cushy and I enjoyed the people I worked with a lot, I didn't necessarily love the work that I was doing. And so when I decided to, to leave and start my own business, it was the point in which I think my mantra is my first one really kind of came about in my life. This is think with your heart and go with your gut. So for many, many years um, since then, I've, I've, my company's been going 10 years now, and I'm very proud of that. This has sort of been our core of how we've done business. We've really focused, and, and I truly, a business model for us is um, not really existent. And that's partially because I was never trained. I mean, I started this business when I was 25. And I was really only in the workforce for a few years um, before I started it as well. When I started it, I had no money and no clients and really um, no clue as to how to run a business. But I just figured I'd, you know, it would work out. And if it didn't, I'd just go get another job. But this idea of doing something that I was passionate about that came from my heart was always something that I felt very, very strongly about um, as a business model for us. One of the things I'm most proud of um, that I've done kind of recently, actually, was in 2007, our company had maybe the best year that we had ever had. And so what I wanted to do for my staff was to give them something special as a thank you, because really, you know, they were the reason that we had such an amazing year. So what I did was uh, a few months in advance, I planned something where I decided that we were going to um, take a volunteer vacation trip to Thailand. So I surprised them 10 days before we were leaving. <laughs> uh, thankfully, it was all OK. And what we did is we went to Thailand, and we worked with Buddhist monks. We worked in the garden on the King's Project. Uh, ask me about that later. Um, we spent some time building gardens. We worked in orphanage. We worked in schools. Um, and we really just spent some time talking to the Buddhist monks um, to help them with their language. It was, a, it was an amazing trip. I think for all of us, it was very much life changing. And I think for the people that we worked with there, it was even more. I mean, it was amazing to just see the faces of these folks uh, and their lives change. The monks themselves were, were amazing people who really after we were uh, 
after we left, continued to keep in touch with us, which is kind of crazy, because you don't think of monks as having cell phones and internet and all that, but they did, which was pretty cool. <coughs> so this is all of us um, on our Thailand trip. And, I, and I'm really proud of this, because you know, it's not a traditional thing that you'd think um, somebody would do, except maybe like Oprah or something, right? But, but I really wa I wanted to do something special, and this trip was special for all of us to not just you know, get to know each other even more and do something really um, exciting together, but also to really make a difference in a totally different community of the world that you know none of us had ever experienced in our lives. And I think that sort of is leads into my next mantra, which is to give freely and often of your time, money, and knowledge. And I think this is kind of a real core principle for us as well as a studio because so much of what we do is based on this idea of giving, whether it's um, through our own client work or through um, other side projects that we do outside of the office. And you'll see, I'll talk about a couple of these other things later. But it's, it's definitely a core part of who we are as a company. Uh, one of the things that we do as a studio is we give an entire year of our services away for free. We work with one non-for-profit for the whole year, doing everything from redoing all of the way that they talk about themselves, their messaging, to all of their print and um, web design, as well as we really make a difference in their strategy and thinking about how they um, work as an organization. So I just want to kind of show a couple things, because I think it's really funny when you see the before and after of some of the identities that we've redone. Um, this is a group called Faith in Place, and one of the things they were really excited about was um, the fact that they're a uh, interfaith, meaning they work with all folks in different religions. And so their logo was trying to represent that, which I thought was kind of uh, interesting, because invariably you're going to leave somebody out. There's going to be a religion that you're, you know, somebody's part of that uh, is not represented here. And so what we decided to do is we changed their identity to something a little bit more um, friendly and a little bit more fitting for the whole community of folks. This next one is, uh, is <coughs> a group called the Chicago Interfaith Committee on Worker Issues. And what a name to begin with. I mean, I don't even think that they said it the same way twice because it was such a mouthful. Not to mention the logo itself was really pretty much just clip art, I think. But it certainly didn't tell anything about who they were or what they did or what they stood for. So we changed that to this nice identity. And not only did we change the identity, but we changed the name of the organization. So Arise Chicago became their name. And Faith Labor Action told a lot more about who they were and what they were doing as their tagline. So this was, this was their new identity for them. This is probably my most favorite, because I really didn't think it could get worse than Faith in Place. Um, <laughs> but it did. <coughs> this was actually last year's grantee. I don't even know if. You could even imagine who this would be by looking at this, because every time I see it, I think it's for lawyers or for some sort of corporate thing downtown somewhere. But it's amazing to me when you think about it, because it's actually for um, a youth group. <laughs> it's for the young Chicago authors. And this is, this is the new identity that we created last year for them. And they're such an amazing group. And what's really neat about what not only the you know, fact that we changed their identity from something that was clearly clearly clip art and clearly just not even representative of who they were. But you know, the fact that now are they able to, they're able to reach beyond you know, the kind of core of people that they were already talking to because they had an image that actually made people, you know, teenagers, want to be part of it. So that in itself was you know, a really cool feat for us to be able to do. So this idea of giving is definitely a part of who we are and what we do um, across all aspects of Firebelly. And my third mantra is to collaborate with others. Uh, no one has all the answers, not even close. And so this is kind of an interesting one, because this is one that is really part of who we are as a studio in terms of the way we work, our process. Um, we very much interact with one another in the studios. And we share files back and forth. We collaborate um, outside the studio as well on projects. Um, and that's kind of what I want to show you a little bit about. Because I think it's really interesting, all of the different things that we do that aren't necessarily traditional business model sort of things. And the way our studio works um, is very much 
not on paper what you would think of as somebody who would actually be able to make money and survive 10 years into the business world. We, we tend to have events twice a year where we gather folks from the community of art and design and we get them together and we work on projects. We do gallery shows and we create these little pop-up shops in our studio where all of the money that we, all of the profits, half the profits that we get out of it are um, given to a non-for-profit or to a charity or individual in need. And so we've raised in total over the course of uh, the four different events that we've had, almost $20,000, which is um, pretty amazing because these are people who just come together and want to do something good because they don't necessarily have the opportunity in their day jobs like we do, but I love being able to give them the opportunity because I think it's a really, it's, it's fun for us. We love it. it. It energizes the work that we do on a daily basis as well. So I love, I love that part of what we are. Number four, take small steps every day. Don't be discouraged if you're not there yet. This one is interesting because as somebody who started a business with no real idea as to do it, how to do it, or what to do, uh, this one, I think now that it's two and a half years out, I, I started a non-for-profit two and a half years ago, and now that I'm two and a half years out of it, I can kind of see why this mantra is so important because I know 10 years ago when I started my business, I would have never, ever guessed that this is what I'd be doing today, like where we're at. I, you know, the design work maybe, but all these other really cool things that we do, I could have never imagined would be part of who we were. And so this is a great mantra because I think as a studio and having this arm for um, our non-for-profit, we're able to, uh, we were, we've been able to in the last two and a half years make huge strides uh, with our group, which you, you heard Fabia talking about this earlier, Reason to Give. Um, I want to show you a little video about it because it's, uh, I think it'll help explain a little bit more about who the folks are that we serve in our, in our group. I lived in the Humboldt Park community for ooh, 29 years. My name is Jason, I'm seven years old. My father was Mexican, but my mom was Puerto Rican. We were raised six kids by herself. It's hard as a single parent trying to raise, you know, four kids. I ain't never had it this rough in the time that I've been in Chicago. I ain't never, never had it so bad. My husband, he's been laid off for like over two years already. So basically I'm the only one working now. My daughter wants to go for criminal justice. She wants to help other people to stop the violence. Since when someone's killed, she wants to help other people. We're kind, warm. I mean, we like to help people. I'm hoping to get out of this program for I could learn how to read better. I need help with reading and math. And I'm a big, puffy, puffy, puffy jacket that is big like Santa. My son, he's going to high school, so he's in need of a computer so he can do his homework and all his research projects. I would really appreciate any help that they can give us because our family does need the help. I would like for them to have what I didn't have, you know what I mean? Go to college, finish school, and do something good, you know what I mean? And a big hat, like big as my head. I need a coat and hat and a scarf and gloves for, for the winter and I want a toy. Whoa! <sighs> you know everything. Whoa, I'm gonna tell my mommy. Whoa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm never gonna take it off. I'm gonna sleep in it, and I'm gonna kiss it, and I'm gonna eat with it, and I'll go outside still with it. The reason to give when we started it, had I realized that the amount of work it was going to take to accomplish what we do in this program, I'm not sure if I would have done it because it, it is an incredible amount of work. And what we've been able to do in the last um, year is amazing. And I don't think, had I realized you know, six months out, all of the time and all of the money and all of those excuses that I could easily have made, I would have probably decided to close it down. But in the last year, we have done some unbelievable stuff, and I think it's all thanks to being patient and finding the right person who could come in and really help our organization. And so uh, we've been really fortunate, and I think uh, it has a lot to do with, with taking small steps. So my last mantra of the evening is to do good. 
contagious, please pass it on. And I think this one's kind of fun because it's really a big part of who I am. I believe I've been really successful because I've had amazing mentors in my life. And I know that what I'm doing is very unique, which is truly the only reason I stand up here and talk in front of people, because honestly, I don't enjoy the public speaking part of this. But at the same time, I know that it's important to show people what I do and so, um, and what's possible, you know? Um, so I think this part is really interesting because we're, we put on this camp every year where we have students, some of which are sitting in the room, um, who come and they work with us for 10 days. They're either in college or they've recently graduated. And they work on a non-for-profit project. Usually it's somebody who's applied for our grant. Um, and they literally sleep on our floors. We cook food for them. It's a 10-day, super-duper intensive internship, basically. They're the ones doing all the work, and we're, their, we're just there sort of as their advisors. Um, it's been an amazing ride for the last two years that we've done this, and I'm so excited that I'm really uh, trying to launch this into a much bigger, longer, either six months or year-long program. <coughs> but it's so cool to be able to do work like this and pass it on to a younger generation, or really any. I mean, I think we inspire a lot of older people based on the work that we do at, at our camp and really in a lot of other ways. And I think that's a really, really important, important thing to do as a human being, to just pass on your knowledge to other folks to show them what's possible. And so this is truly why I do what I do and why I think that it's important to be living the life that you believe in and what makes you happy. Thank you. <laughs>